This week, we're upgrading the leaf strings on the Raptor to Deavers. No more saggy butt. Hey guys, how are you again? I'm under my truck today because we're doing leaf spring upgrades for the Raptor. We're gonna be installing Deaver's HD Plus 4 that I just picked up from Deaver's a couple weeks ago. Really excited for this upgrade because I've had a problem with my back end sagging too much because I just carry too much gear because I've gotten stuck before. Yeah. This process is basically the same whether you have an F-150 or a Raptor. We're gonna show you how to take them off, how to put them back on, and a lot of lessons learned along the way. We're gonna cover giving them an extra coat of rust protection, and then we will show you ways to install the leaf springs without removing the shocks. Now for this install, we're going from Deaver's HD Plus 1s to Deaver's HD Plus 4s. But the process is basically the same if you have stock leaf springs. There's only one difference. You have to cut out a bolt, and we'll show you which bolt you have to cut out. Another difference too is I have my exhaust out. We mainly took the exhaust out for filming purposes to make it easier for us to kind of get the angles we wanted. And it really helped us get around some of these bolts, some of these really tight areas. You don't need to do this on your truck. We did it because we were doing other upgrades as well, a bump stop, which we'll more on that later. And yeah, this is the first time We've done this kind of upgrade. We've never worked on leaf springs before, so my kids and I went through quite a bit of learning. We brought in a friend of ours, Jason, to help us out. Um, so yeah, just sit back, relax, watch how to do it, watch us kind of fumble our way through the leaf spring upgrade. And hopefully there's a lot of lessons there for you guys. Okay, now here's a quick tip when it comes to deemers. Even though they come painted, it's a good idea to add an extra bit of rust protection. Uh, I think that's the biggest complaint that you get with any kind of set of deemers. AMS oils, rust protection is pretty good. I also heard steel is pretty good. Definitely give those guys a nice coat. Now, I want to show you a tip here too. Anytime you're doing any kind of aerosol spray, it's a good idea to go ahead and warm them up before you spray. And that's mainly to get the paint to behave correctly, especially if you're not painting in the middle of summer. It's a good idea to put them in some warm water and let them heat up for about 15 minutes before you spray and give them a good shake. We ended up giving these guys about two to three coats over the course of uh, a day or two. And it's not a bad idea to also separate the leaves and try to get the areas in between. All right, let's go over some of the tools you're gonna need for this uh, install. Half inch wrench, half inch torque wrench, 21 millimeter socket, 22 millimeter socket, 24 millimeter socket. An impact can be electric or pneumatic, whatever you want. A mallet, a crowbar, crescent wrench, flathead screwdriver, a pry bar, some cleaning brushes, preferably metal. It's a block of wood. Two jacks and two jack stands. Um, you could probably get away with a single jack, but you're definitely going to need two jack stands. And we're also going to need an extra pair of hands. Yum. I don't think you guys are going to be enough. I think we're gonna need some more hands, but where are we gonna find some? I don't know. There has to be an app for that. <laughs> you guys find any apps yet? No. Where's your phone? Uh, You're not even yeah. looking. You gotta help me out. <laughs> I got one here. Ooh. Okay, yeah, just regular mechanic, regular mechanic. Oh, that one's gonna have a bit nasty plumbers, but we're not going no, for that one. Uh -uh. Oh, look at this one. Ooh. Oh, sexy redhead. Yes. We're getting that one. Yes, we definitely are. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> Someone order some man hands. <laughs> so here's the hardware that comes with the kit. You get only U bolts and bolts. You got new bushings. Be careful with the size. The smaller ones use the thicker rods and the spacers, and the bigger ones use the thinner ones and then you're gonna reuse some of the stock hardware. So you're gonna use, these are on the shackle side, both the top and bottom of the shackle, the plate, the actual shackle, and the plate underneath. Now they give you a new set of bolts for the front because if you change it from stock, you have to cut these off. Okay, with jacking up the truck, you need to jack it up from the frame, but also from the axle. You need to have the ability to move the axle independently. We also ended up using our jack stands to support our jacks up just for safety. We ended up putting one up front and one in the back of the tow hooch just in case the truck slipped. Let's go over the bolts we're going to remove. First off, the bolt at the front of the frame. Uh, if you have stock bolts, you need to cut this one. 
lower bolt at the bottom of the shackle. And all four U bolts under the axle. Okay, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up all the nuts. Make you sure you use a breakaway bar to do this before you Guess use the impact. Now this rear bolt is under tension, so you need to walk it out. How long is this freaking bolt? Oh my god, my arms hurt. I took way too many days. Out yet? Yeah, it's something just dumped. Yeah, like I said, the bolt's under tension. If you lower the axle a little bit, you can actually take a lot of this tension off, so you can pull this. That was scary. That sucked. Okay, now for the front, but again, again, we want to break away the tension and then ratchet it out. Launch it, don't fucking launch it at your brother. I know. <laughs> I exist now. If you have the stock leaves, you will need to cut this bolt because it's actually facing the other direction and the exhaust is in the way and you will not be able to pull it out. If you do cut it, try to use a sawzall because on the other side you have a gas tank and you need to avoid it. Now for the U-bolts, and here comes a quick tip. Before you remove any bolt, take a wire and brush to them and get them really, really clean. We ended up losing two of the U-bolts uh, because of it. Um, so much dirt and gunk gets cooked up in there that you're going to strip the bolt if you don't do it. Yep, it's coming out slowly. Oh, that's why there's mud kicked up in the nuts. I'm holding you. There we go. We were able to take the bolt off that pin it, but as you can see, it's it's kind of a problem. And the main reason for this is it's the lowest point and the plate underneath tends to collect a lot of mud. Now you have a couple options to remove the leaf springs. Here we're going to show you how to remove them towards the cab. My son did kind of get a little stuck there because he wasn't holding it correctly, but it's not too bad and it avoids you having to take the exhaust out. Make sure you remove the top plate from the leaf springs and then also remove the bolts to reuse the shackle. This is also the time to install new shackles if you decided to go with a lower drop. Oh, oh come on! Uh, Anti-seize. <laughs> now we gotta prep the new leaf springs. First, you wanna install the new bushings. Bear in mind the size. You have larger ones and smaller ones. Larger ones go towards the front of the cab with this thinner tube, with the smaller ones going towards the back of the did truck. Did you just hit yourself? No. Sure looked like you did. No, it's... Now notice the direction that it's going on. It's important that we put it in this way. So one thing to note here, you need to make sure that the nut is on the outside of the shackle. So in other words, outside of the truck. This is going in on the passenger side, so we're gonna put it on the left-hand side. What the? Put all your weight on it. <laughs> I'm trying. All right, go. He's lifting me up. There it is. Now it's time to install. Here we install it from the back. You could only do this if you remove the exhaust, but it definitely helps out to install from the back so you don't have to take the shock off, which is an even bigger headache. Once you get it lined up, put the front bolt into place, and you are going to hammer it in. Then move on to the rear bolt and hammer it partially in, but you're not going to be able to get it in all the way. You are going to have that walk it in. Come on, hit it with your big purse. <laughs> Do I need to pull it down a little bit, Ethan? There it is. Hey. Now we do suck. <laughs> so just gotta thread it through and that's good. Oh, that thing is pretty solid. Yeah. It's gonna have to wrench it in. Go ahead and wrench the bolt in and just be mindful and careful that you don't damage the threads. Not starting, so that's good. Okay. Next, the axle and the springs need to come together. Now, to get it to align, any upward motion you do with the jack from underneath, any left to right passenger side to driver side motion you do with your feet, and any front to back action you need to do with the ratcheting strap on the axle itself. Okay. That should get us close enough. But that's in. Nice. <laughs> Next, we're gonna install the U-bolts. Don't forget, we're reusing the upper and lower plates that, that were currently on the axle and the old leaf springs Plate? to install the new ones. Which side's more damaged? The one that's more sandblasted. Yeah, but that way, right? Yes, exactly. Factory. Oh. Yeah. 
Make sure there's a washer in there. Wait, is it on the actual thing? I just barely put these skids on and they're... Yeah, they're Black destroyed. Yeah, they're destroyed. I saw that too. I'm like, what the hell? That's a sacrificial part though. That's what they're there for, exactly. <laughs> now, if you notice, we haven't actually tightened anything in. All we've done is kind of put everything into place, and that's because you need to get your axle into that level or neutral position before you torque anything up. So once you have everything bolted up, go ahead and jack up your axle until it's level or neutral before you torque any of the bolts down. Once the axle is level, go ahead and start off by tightening the U-bolts first. It's very important that those U-bolts go in evenly so you can have a proper hold on the axle. Do not put it in unevenly like you see here. You will risk not getting a proper hold on the axle. Once you finish walking up those bolts evenly, now you need to torque them. And it's best to torque them in a crisscross pattern. You start off with the front, work your way to the back, cross over, and then back to the front again. You also need to torque these U bolts progressively. You can start off with the first torque at 75 foot pounds, and then do a second torque at 100 foot pounds. There we go. Next, go ahead and torque the lower shackle bolt to 136 foot pounds. How much twerking I've been doing today? Yikes. Oh, did you say twerking? Yeah. You can't be Patrick. <laughs> He's I'm shaking his ass while he's fucking tightening up. It's not up. working. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, do that again. Do that again, dude. Nope. Come on. <laughs> there is no video record of that. <laughs> I can't go anymore. <laughs> he's reaching for the ropes. <laughs> That's, more. That's more than I weigh. At least you did the tedious part. There it is. There it is. Now to finish the install, we're going to go ahead and torque the last bolt at the frame. Now this is the most difficult to torque. It requires you to torque it down to 250 foot-pounds, but there's no space on the inside of the frame. You have to get some kind of bar or something to help you get the right leverage to do the torque. And that's it. Once you're done, you put the tire back on and repeat the whole process all over again on the other side. Now we're not going to bore you with doing both sides in this video. Here's a quick time lapse of us going through and doing the other side. The other side went much quicker now that we knew how to do it. We, you know, gone through a little bit of growing pains and, and we moved fairly speedy through it. As far as time, you're going to need at least a full afternoon if you've never done it before. We probably spent about two hours per side to get this done. And I'm sure more experienced guys could do this much quicker. But again, we're, we're trying to save the money on doing this on our own. And I also wanted to make sure this was a great learning experience for me and my boys so that they can learn how to do this and, and you know and, and it really isn't that difficult the main thing here is you need help just need help to get this done because the devers are heavy and it just takes a long time to really get those bolts in and out and sometimes because it's so tight you can't really take anything out with power tools so you have to do this all by hand at the end of the day, removing the exhaust made it a million times more easier. So if you want to do this, I highly recommend you remove the exhaust. It's a matter of just taking off the two hanging clips that hold it in a place at the frame and then just disconnecting the exhaust in the middle. It'll give you a ton of more space and avoid you having to take the shocks out. Because taking the shocks out is a whole nother nightmare you really don't want to deal with when you're doing this. All right, guys, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys find it helpful. We got a lot more to come for the truck. We also ordered some RPG bump stop so be on the lookout for that video we're gonna be getting those installed putting them through a proper test and a couple other little things like the diff covers and stuff like that for the truck so don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like if you have any questions or comments put them in the uh, comments below or shoot us an email at keep it dirty out at gmail.com before we close big thank you to Jason he's scrapped her 1023 on Instagram he was an immense help on this install I just got out of surgery and he really you know came out helped us do all the heavy lifting and really helped my boys do a lot of the work so again man thank you so much for your help on this one and guys thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one